What happens to police officers in prison? That's what I'll be talking about in this video. On the two police officers in question I'll be talking about are Wayne Cousins and David Carrick. Now, a lot of people will have heard of these two predators, shall we call them, two police officers that were serving as police officers whilst they committed their offences. And um, these are the two I'm mentioning because these are high-profile cases and they received life sentences for these attacks that they've done to women. And <clears throat> Wayne Cousins was actually sentenced to life without parole. On the evening of March the 3rd, 2021, 33-year-old Sava Everard was kidnapped in South London as she was walking home to the Brixton Hill area from a friend's house near Clapham Common. She was stopped by off-duty Metropolitan Police Constable Wayne Cousins, who identified himself as a police officer, handcuffed her and placed her in his car, driving her near to Dover where he raped and strangled her before burning her body and disposing of her remains in a nearby pond. On the 9th of March 2021, Cousins was arrested in Deal, Kent, first on suspicion of Sarah Everard's kidnapping and later on suspicion of her murder. Sarah's remains were discovered in Woodland near Ashford, Kent on the 10th of March. Following their identification, Cousins was charged with her kidnapping and murder. Vigils were held for Sarah on the evening of the 13th of March. The vigil on Clapham Common, near where she had disappeared, led to a controversial police response on four arrests for breaches of COVID-19 regulations. The murder gave rise to widespread debate about the role of police in British society and women's safety in the UK. On the 8th of June 2021, Cousins pleaded guilty to Sarah's kidnapping and rape and admitted responsibility to her death. On the 9th of July, he pleaded guilty to her murder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order on the 30th of September 2021. And Wayne Cousins is now incarcerated in HMP Franklin and he's living on the VP wings, which is the Vulnerable Prisoner Wings, also known as the Nonce Wings, where he's living in protection with the rest of the monsters. Now, David Carrick received multiple life sentences for his attacks on women. David Carrick was born on the 4th of January 1975. He's an English serial rapist and former police officer who worked for the Metropolitan Police. He joined the police force in 2001 and worked as an armed police officer in the parliamentary and diplomatic protection from 2009 until his initial suspension without pay and subsequent sacking from his position. Carrick was arrested in 2021 and in 2022 pleaded guilty to multiple counts of rape between 2002 and 2021. In 2023, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. I'll just play a couple of videos now, one of David Carrick's sentencing and one of his arrest. These are the necessities that I've just explained to you. No well, okay. keep going. Well, that's, that's one of three, uh, one of four, so... Okay. Well, I'll allow you to get, to get some close... What is it you're searching for? Articles relating to the offences. in St Albans? In 2020. This, this is the allegation that's been made to us, okay, sir? There's no necessity. Yes, there is. So I've been a police officer for 20 years. Right. David. Do you want me to come naked like this? No, just understand you're under arrest, okay? I'm under just arrest. explain to us, what do you need? I'll pull it like this. Don't right. Worry about it. Can, can one of my colleagues go and get you stuff? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah. yeah. Which one's yours? It's the back one. Okay. Right, okay. okay. Um, Where are your keys then? We'll bring those at least. Carrick, I have to sentence you for 49 offences on two indict indictments committed over 17 years while you were a serving police officer. Some of those charges represent multiple offences and you have admitted at least 71 instances of sexual violence against 12 victims. You also took advantage of three of those women in brutal, controlling and coercive relationships. These convictions represent a spectacular downfall for a man charged with upholding the law 
and empowered to do so even to the extent of being authorized to bear a firearm in the execution of his duty. Behind a public appearance of propriety and trustworthiness, you took monstrous advantage of women drawn into intimate relationships with you. You brazenly raped and sexually assaulted many women, some you barely knew. You behaved as if you were untouchable. You were bold and at times relentless, trusting that no victim would overcome her shame and fear to report to you for no of, quotes, wholly exceptional circumstances which the court indicated would justify such an order. I've also scrutinized the judgment of the court in another recent conjoined case, the Crown and Stuart Cousins, Tustin and Hughes, 2022 EWCA Crim 1063, in which the offender Cousins appealed against the whole life order imposed on him following a notorious abduction of a young woman from the streets of London, accomplished while he was an off-duty police officer by use of his warrant card, followed by her rape and murder. The court accepted that police officers are in a uniquely powerful position. In respect of the fixing of minimum terms where a mandatory life sentence is required by law, as set out in Schedule 21 of the Sentencing Code, a different scheme to the one I have to apply. Lord Burnett, Chief Justice, stated the principle, quote, in our view, the correct approach is to focus on the facts, which in a rare case might lead to the conclusion that a whole life order is appropriate, close quote. At paragraph 83, having explained the correct route to a whole life order in that case, he continued, quote, this was, as the judge said, warped, selfish, and brutal offending, which was both sexual and homicidal. It was a case with unique and extreme aggravating features. Chief amongst these, as the judge correctly identified, was the grotesque misuse by cousins of his position as a police officer with all that connated to facilitate Miss Everard's kidnap, rape, and murder. We agree with the observations of the judge about the unique position of the police the critical importance of their role and the critical trust the public repose in them. End of quote. Had the court in McCann imagined the facts of this case, would they have equated it to the gravity of the near-miss mass murder attempt or the foiled terrorist atrocity, which the court considered would compel a court to attach a whole life tariff to a discretionary life sentence? On count six, on the second indictment, I impose a concurrent determinate sentence of nine years. 31 sentences of life imprisonment are imposed on the main indictment on counts one, two, 36 life sentences. The minimum term you will have to serve before the parole board can think of releasing you is 30 years, 239 days. And you may go down. Now, David Carrick was in HMP Belmarsh because his case was so high profile whilst he was on remand awaiting trial. He was in HMP Belmarsh on the Cartier unit. Um, I'm not sure exactly where he's at now, but more than likely probably will end up somewhere like Franklin Prison and he could end up being on the same wing as Wayne Cousins. Now, what happens to police officers like this when they land in prison? Obviously, they've become a number one target because, as you can imagine, people in prison don't like police officers anyways. And if they get incarcerated with the police officers, the police officers are going to come under attack. Now, they'll come under attack of the lads that are on the mainstream wings, which is the normal locations. So as soon as they land in prison or in reception, they will be placed in protection. On protection is on the vulnerable prisoner wings, which is a vulnerable, a VP is normally a sex offender or somebody that can't handle the prison and they feel like they're going to get attacked. So they'll ask for protection and the place in a VP, protective custody. But also, along with paedophiles, rapists, grasses, there's also people that have 
become addicted to drugs in prison and they've run up a big drugs debt and they're now under attack or they're going to get attacked for non-payment of debt and they put themselves on protection and these people will go and live amongst the paedophiles, the rapists and everyone I've just mentioned and ex-police officers. Um, <clears throat> and the, these are doing that for protection. But when these type of lads who are classed as well, they were normal location lads that put themselves on protection for drug debts. Obviously, these are the ones that will attack these police officers or paedophiles. Obviously, if they do attack one of these, they will then be placed in segregation and they won't be allowed on the VP wings because they'll become, they'll become like a bit of a problem and they'll be worried about putting them on their wings with the like-minded people because they will feel like they're going to attack them so it's quite hard and difficult for the prison officers and the governors to decide where to put people like this. They can't go on the normal location wings because they've been chased because they owe drug money. So they go on to protection, but they then go on to attack paedophiles or ex-police officers. So they then get put into segregation, but they cannot go back onto the main location wings <clears throat> because they will become attacked themselves on these wings. Because once a lad or someone has put themselves on protection and they've went and lived with paedophiles and rapists, once they have done that, they can't go back onto normal location because they will become attacked themselves. Obviously, they'll have that drug debt that's still going, or they might have informed on somebody in the prison, and that's why they put themselves there. Sometimes the lads have actually tried putting themselves back on main location. They've been transferred to a different prison, and they'll go and put themselves on main location. And then they get found out because another lad that's been in the prison with them previously will get moved to that prison that they're in now and they will become under attack again. But getting back to the title of the video, the police officers get put straight into protective custody in prison and they go and live amongst the paedophiles. And the reason why they do that is because they're a number one priority for getting attacked in prison off the other prisoners. And they're less likely to get attacked from paedophiles and rapists because paedophiles and rapists don't see themselves as being criminals as such, the sex offenders. So they don't think twice about if they're having an argument on a wing. They don't think twice about going up to the, uh, the prison staff and grassing because it's second nature to them. That's what their type of people they are. If they feel like they're coming under attack, um, and it's not them attacking somebody else, they will go and grass, inform, and tell them what's happening. And I know this because some of the staff or the officers, the screws that used to be in Franklin Prison, some of them used to work with the paedophiles on the VP wings, and they would come up and tell us lads on a normal location what it was like working with them and what they used to do. So that's how we know the dynamics of what goes on on the VP wings. But when these prison officers, uh, when these police officers, when they're first arrested and they go to the local prison, some of these local prisons don't have protection wings. And this is when they will become attacked inside the prison. And with these being high profile all over the news, everybody knows the faces, everybody knows who they are, even the prison staff. I'll inform other people, other lads on the wing. When someone comes on the wing like this, like a paedophile or a prison officer, and it's on normal location or there's no protection, they will get found out and they will get seriously hurt. Because like I mentioned, the screws will go and tell the lads. Normally it's the top dogs or the top lads on the wing who the screws get on with. Sometimes it's the cleaners because the cleaners normally get on with the screws and they'll have a bit of banter back and forth and the screws will tell the lads what people are in for because they don't want them type of people living on the wings with the normal location lads. So when they get found out, they'll get seriously hurt. They'll either get, they'll get beat up with lads using their fists, but depending on what prison you're in, if it's a high security prison, then the violence is likely going to be more extreme. And the extreme violence that will happen to them in these prisons is they'll either get slashed They'll get stabbed in the neck. They'll try and take the eyes out. They'll choke boiling hot oil over them, or they use a boiling hot kettle full of sugar. 
um, and these are the type of things that will be getting inflicted on them or that there's uh, been known to use a double razor blade. So the lads will use a razor blade melted into a toothbrush. So there's two blades side by side. And when they cut down the face, there's two big slices. So the reason why they do that, because they can't stitch them up and it leaves more of a scar afterwards. Because if you imagine you've got two big cuts on your face, if they try to stitch this one, the other one comes open so they can't actually stitch it. They've only got to glue it. And I did see one lad in Franklin Prison once I was there. I seen the aftermath of him getting sliced with a double blade. And the scar that was left on his face was as thick as a finger. It looked like a finger had been stitched on his face. It was that big and deep, the scar. And the scar tissue, when it healed up afterwards, it was a big, thick lump on his face. It's a very revealing mark on the face. It's like, like I say, it's a very nasty mark. But these are the type of things that happened to pedophiles, grasses, um, rapists, ex-police officers that are found out in the prisons if they get onto main locations. But they have also been attacked whilst they're on the VP wings, like I mentioned, off the people that have been on normal location. But um, the police officers that are high profile, the likes of Wayne Cousins and David Carrick, they won't be having a cushy time in prison. They will be hating it because they're living in, in a prison with people that they have actually locked up before. Because don't forget there were police officers, so a police officer's role is to lock people up and put people in prison, also to protect the public, or they were supposed to, apart from these corrupt ones that have done nasty things and horrible things to women, and they've ended up in prison. But once they're in prison, and they're on the VP wings, and they get themselves settled in, they will be probably end up becoming living comfortably because they will find like-minded people. But again, they'll be associating with pedophiles and rapists. And these will be the friends that they're living with. But the daily routine for these people in prison is the same as what happens with the normal location lads. But because they've got their own workshops away from the normal location lads, so they'll never come into contact with each other, they will probably will start feeling a little bit of safety. But throughout the sentence, they will become attacked and found out at some point in the sentence. Because even the rapists and some of the paedophiles in the prisons probably don't look at themselves as being as bad as them. And again, it all depends how they conduct themselves. If they're on the wing, think they're a bit arrogant or think they're a bit cocky, which they probably will be. The other lads, the rapists and the paedophiles, will probably be attacking them themselves. So they won't be having a comfortable time. And they will be trying to leech onto somebody who they think might be a bit bigger, who looks like... Because there is some big, intimidating-looking paedophiles and rapists in amongst them. Because when we were in Franklin Prison, when we were in the workshop, you used to see them getting escorted back to their wings before us and used to look out and see them and used to see some very big-looking, intimidating fucking rapists and paedophiles. They're not all little dweeby looking things or little typical glasses, little fat, short, stumpy thing looking paedophile. There is some big, strong looking men amongst them that can cause some serious damage. So they will become attacked at some point of these. But the daily routine is the same as like I've just mentioned on the normal location. They'll go to the workshops, then they'll have gym because you have your gym separate from the VPs and the normals have everything separate. Visits are separate. The gym is separate. But um, also, they'll probably be getting a hard time off the prison officers because there will be some prison officers in there that have been made to work on the VP wings and they don't like working there. They like working on the normal location wings. But because of what happens in the prisons, sometimes the staff haven't got control over which wings they work on. They just get told to go and work with them. So I'd imagine some of the staff will be giving them a hard time as well, making it as uncomfortable as possible for them. But again, because they were police officers and they'll probably know quite a bit about the prison law, they'll try and manipulate it and try and use it to their advantage. And because they were police officers, they'll try and use a bit of power and think they're above other people. But again, they'll get found out and some of the staff just won't stand for it and they will give them a hard time. But what will happen like the daily routine, you get opened up in the morning around about 8 o'clock, 8.30, go to work at nine and you're at work from nine till 11. Then you come back, have a little bit of exercise time. Then it's lunch. Then you get behind your door to have your dinner. 
Then you open back up from two till four, again, to go to workshops or clean up, whatever, whatever job you've got in the prison. Then you come back and you're banged up from four till five. And then back on a night time, you're opened up for association and gym time, which is normally from five till seven. Then you're banged up for the rest of the night. And that's the daily routine in most prisons. But if they haven't got a job and they're too scared to go to the workshops or whatever, they will be banged up most of the day and they'll get nighttime association, which is normally five till seven. So if they're not working, they'll be getting minimal time outside of the pod. And a lot of them that feel vulnerable or feel feel like they're going to come under attack, even on the VP wings, they'll not come out of the pods. So it'll do 24 hours a day of bang up and they might go out and have a bit of exercise. But um, that's what will be happening with them in prison. And because they're so high profile, when they get moved to another prison, they're constantly going to be in fear that they're going to be attacked because of who they are, what they are, and what they actually done to land themselves in prison. So hopefully I've broke that down quite a bit for you people. Um, and the same goes for high profile pedophiles, rapists, anyone that harmed women, children, kids. These type of high profile people will be constantly under attack or feel like they're going to be under attack. So they will not be having an easy ride in prison. And I'd just like to put that straight for some of the subscribers because you did ask for these videos. But again, if there's any more videos that you would like us to cover, leave it in the comments and I will cover a lot more of these topics because I notice the subscribers are liking these type of videos. But again, I've mentioned on my previous videos, the majority of my viewers that are watching these videos aren't even subscribed to my channel. So if you don't mind, going down, checking if you're subscribed. And if you're not, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost nothing. It's free to subscribe. But all it does is help me channel grow because the more subscribers I have, the bigger the channel will be. And I will get videos that will be better and bigger every time. So if you don't mind double checking, but if you are enjoying that content, people, remember to hit the like button. Let me know what you think of the video. And if you want us to make any more, drop it in the comments. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.